Senator Rand Paul insisting it will be hard to get his vote. We spoke with Senator Paul on Capitol Hill. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Good to be with you. All right, so the fiscal cliff, many people are back in Washington. Should the American people be angry at this process, or is this how the legislative sausage is made and we should just be more patient? Well, I guess I'm a little annoyed because I was here last week for a whole week and we did nothing all week long. And so I wonder, you know, if the Democrats have a proposal, why don't they put a proposal forward and let's see if Republicans can agree to it. But, you know, they need to be part of the process. And so far, I haven't seen much uh, give on the part of the Democrats. Your uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid said today that the House is acting with the dictatorship of a speaker. So he's a different view. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what that means necessarily. But I do know that the tax rates are going to Expire. And one of my favorite analogies that everybody says is so it's like a hundred people are drowning and you're going to save 98 of them by, you know, only protecting them from a tax increase, 98 percent. And my question is, well, they're all drowning, right? Which means that raising taxes is a bad thing for everyone. So why would we only do it on two? We can save 98 percent from a tax increase, but why would drowning be our policy? Why would we be in favor of a policy of drowning? you know, raising taxes. It sounds like it's a bad thing for everyone. Why are they so insistent that we raise taxes on someone? Do you get the idea there's a discussion going on in the Senate? I mean, I turn on the TV and I'll see like different senators take to the floor and so they're speaking, I don't know, to the other senators who might be there or to the American people. But what about in the halls here at the U.S. Senate? Are people talking and discussing, negotiating, trying to work on solutions? I think that uh, the way it's been set up is, is for a few people in leadership, and I always joke that I have to ask people in the media, hey, what's going on with the fiscal cliff thing? Because we don't really feel a part of it. Now, I am, am here today for an important thing. I was here discussing the Fourth Amendment, which I think is important, and whether the Fourth Amendment should apply to your email, your texting, and to your internet searches, and I think that is important. So I was here not with the fiscal cliff, but talking about something that I care deeply about, and that's the Fourth Amendment, and that it should be protected for things you do on your computer. All right, let's say we go with the fiscal cliff. It's January 2nd. Will it seem any different than January 1st or December 31st to most Americans? You know, I think that uh, most people think there's a certain inevitability that the president won the election, he wants to raise taxes, he controls the Senate, and he controls the White House. So what I keep saying is Democrats will probably win, they'll probably get their way either this year or next year, and we will get higher taxes. But it'll be a bad thing for the economy, it'll be a bad thing for job creation, and in the end, may not even do what he wants, because sometimes you raise rates and you get less revenue. It's what happened in England a couple years ago. They raised rates and they got less millionaires and they got less revenue and they're actually reversing course now. And we have many examples in our country of lowering rates and getting more revenue. Reagan did it. In fact, the Bush tax cuts in 2003 lowered rates and got more revenue and the rich paid a higher percentage. So I don't think what, he's gonna, what he wants to do will work and I think it'll be counterproductive. All right, the different plans are talk about a, a 10 year uh, period of time, right? That's what these plans are. Is there anything, let's say that a plan is adopted now for 10 years, is there anything to prevent like two years from now that everyone comes back to Washington, <laughs> the House and the Senate, and they just scrap the last eight years so that the 10 um, years is, is really a meaningless uh, yeah, there, time? Yeah, there's, there's two main problems with projecting things over 10 years. One, they're historically bad at projections. They can't predict what's gonna happen next year, much less 10 years. And then the other thing is, you're right, future Congresses can change. Look, last year when we had the big debt ceiling fight and we had the Budget Control Act and everybody was worried about that, well, we passed a Budget Control Act and we set limits on spending, we exceed them all the time. And when we bring up a point of order, they say, oh, well, we decided that we don't care anymore. A year later, so they don't obey their own rules. It's really why people are so frustrated with Congress, is that we pass rules on ourselves, like we're supposed to read the bills and print them up and put them online. We just disobey the rule. We, the majority just votes and says, we don't care. We're gonna hit the debt ceiling very soon. Uh, two questions. Number one, um, would you agree if, if for any reason to raise the debt ceiling? That's the first thing. And number two is if we hit the debt ceiling, does this mean that Americans are not gonna get their tax refunds when they apply for them in January, February, or March, whenever it's, I think be delayed? Um, I would raise the debt ceiling under one condition, and that would be a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. Barring that, people in Congress, those who I've met up here, 
They don't deserve to manage any more money. They're doing a bad job managing the money they have. We should not send them any more money. They're not to be trusted with money. So I wouldn't extend their borrowing. And so we need to be limited in borrowing so we are limited in our spending. And so if they agree to a balanced budget amendment, I'll agree to raise the debt ceiling. So I'm sort of hardcore on this. It's hard to get my vote. All right, how about the tax refunds? Are they going to be delayed? Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure on that. I think there are a lot of ways. Government could be run even on just receipts that come in. We bring in about 70% of what we need. So the pro government could be prioritized even without raising the debt ceiling. You would spend it on the things that are absolutely the most necessary. We might quit spending $3 million to study monkeys on methamphetamine, $300,000 to study robotic squirrels being bitten by rattlesnakes, half a million dollars spent on developing a menu for what food we might like to eat on Mars. So there's a lot of waste up here that could be cut out. Senator, nice to see you, sir. <laughs> Thank you.